Hi, I'm April Edrington, and we're here today at Leading Edge Real Estate, where we're about to talk with Ann Mann about her career in real estate on this edition of Belmont Business Spotlight. Real estate. Hello! <laughs> you're such a character. I'm so excited to interview you today. I'm so glad um, you're here today. You know, I, I know you through so many different activities that you do in town, but I've never found out how you got into real estate. So that was a fluke. Um, I was working in venture capital and I was uh, working with hedge funds and other things like that, and I was making billionaires very wealthy. Mm -hmm. at, um, it wasn't a satisfying job, and my husband was at teaching at Harvard Medical School, and he was at Mass General, and he was doing so well that I said, I hate my job. You're doing well. Do you mind if I take some time off and try to find another career? And it was his suggestion, because whenever we passed an open house, I'm like, oh, can we just stop for a second? And <laughs> I would run into houses, even though I wasn't necessarily buying one, and he said, look, absolutely take a year off and he's like but here's what you have to do you have to try real estate I'm like I'm never gonna want to do sales I, I have no interest in sales and he's like just try it and it was funny because at the time I was running for the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. and I was holding my sign and man with other people and my opponent's representative for his campaign owned a real estate company and what he had said to me jokingly was hey, if you ever want to go into real estate, give me a call. And, and there he saw you. And that was a joke design. with my, and, <laughs> and, and you know, just to start a conversation. And it turned out that after I lost the selectman election and, um, and thought about it, I took the classes and I went to him and I said, I passed the exam and I'm ready to be a realtor. And, and he, re no. And no. he replied, wait, what? Who are you? No, he knew me, but he's like, I can't hire you. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you're kind of crazy. And I said, I'm not crazy. I'm just energetic. And he said, and I don't, I don't know. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable about this. Anyway, I started to cry and the tears got to him and he signed it and gave me back my contract. And he said, you have six weeks to sell a house. And if you if it doesn't work, then you know that's it. For it's you. nice knowing you. And it turned out that um, I had been coaching soccer and basketball at the same time, and I happened to know a couple people that were getting a divorce. And I actually closed two properties within 30 days of becoming a realtor, which was very exciting. And then the rest was history. And then the rest was and history. And then the rest was history. Yes, yes. And so, it's been an amazing run. My first year. And my, how long has that been? I think it's been about 14 years. 14 years. First year I sold 22 houses. Second year I was the top realtor in all of New England of for Century 21. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine? It's fabulous. It is fabulous. So you must have seen a lot of trends, at, you know, kind of like as the market has gone up and down. You know, what are some of the things you've seen in the real estate market in 14 years that you've been doing this? Well, what's wild is when, when my very first sale was back when it was a buyer's market and I only had one, and that was the end, and then the market turned around. The surprise is, every year I say, this can't keep going. There's no, like, COVID, come on, right? Mm. Uh, marathon bombing, you'd think that that would have an impact on the market. Um, inflation, market. <laughs> interest rates, stock market crashes, all sorts of things, and it just keeps going, and even when we had the recession, mm. Belmont, because we have a new net zero high school or we were building it at the time and um, 
and we focused, we made our schools our flagship, we always got in the national journals and people wanted to come here. So our market only got hit 5%. Other towns uh -huh. that didn't focus on education were taking a much larger hit. But we stood solid. And look at our public transportation into Cambridge and into Belmont, or Boston. Pretty good. Yeah. It's a good town to live in. I Great think, town. I think everyone who knows you and <laughs> knows that I support client. the schools. Yes. And <laughs> I love this town. And quick side note. Belmont Media Center, which you're all watching us on right now, is something I refer my clients to all the time because this is where you're going to learn about the events that are coming up, about the politics and what we're going to be voting right. on. And we need to have a higher voter participation in this town because you matter. And what you think about is important. You have to look at the candidates that are running and see what they say and make sure they agree with you. That's not a political statement, but it is. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I met you for the first time at Belmont Helps, which is an event that the town used to put on to help people learn about all the activities going on in town. Yes. Um, and so I'd love to hear a little bit about what else you do in town. Oh, so I love this town. And just a side note, when I got here, I had a son that, I, my son was very young, he had cerebral palsy, I didn't even know what cerebral palsy was, mm. and this community, um, oh, This community Strangers, shows up. yes, this community, this community showed up, shows up in a huge way. And so I had people that were offering physical therapy for free and counseling to me because I didn't know what it was. And financially, it was very difficult. Yeah. Because Jack, we were not covered by medical insurance because he was a pre existing condition. I, he was born with cerebral palsy. So, which for those who don't know is if you don't get enough oxygen, I couldn't get him out. And he didn't get enough oxygen to the brain, so he lost some of his motor skills. But um, the town really helped me out. But then I realized I need to get more involved in the town because I had to figure out how I was going to raise a child in a town that was going to accept him and make it all work, which is why I started going to school committee meetings and finance committee meetings yeah. and learning about how we integrated with children with disabilities and that sort of thing. And, um, and that, he had, had a huge factor in my life in the way that I looked at everybody and everything around me. So, um, and so that's why went, I ran for selectmen. So you ran for selectmen? Yes, You've been on the town meeting, authority. I'm on the housing authority as a commissioner because I learned that a lot of people went bankrupt because they were trying to save the lives of their children or to help their children's medical needs because when we were going to the hospital all the time I would meet people that were trying to decide whether they could afford the next leg braces or a walker for their child and many of them had to take public transportation it's financially devastating yeah. and so Mitt Romney who was a resident of Belmont thank you so much for bringing a health care program to the state that allowed people to be identified as human beings when even when they were born with an illness. And you gave so much back and I mean it's so great. I think one of the things in addition to being a volunteer yourself, you recruit a lot of us to do Right. This. <laughs> right. Yes, April, I made her help me out because she showed a good <laughs> smile and I knew she was ready. Well, I think it's really terrific. You know, you, you uh, your profession is real estate, but you really do integrate people into the community. And so what are some of the other organizations? I mean, well, I'll say, uh, you know, my daughter is in the performing arts company at the high school, you're a sponsor there. And when I go to the grocery store, I see your name yeah. on the grocery cart right there. <laughs> I'm watching what you're buying. <laughs> you um, are. Um, but tell us about some of the other organizations in town that you work with. So doing good work. I love the Belmont Foundation for Education because mm -hmm. it fills the gap that we have in the deficit to get kids supplies. The Belmont Robotics Club, um, the Belmont Food Pantry, the Belmont Helps. So yeah. pretty much, and, and also individuals. So because I knew what it was like to try to pay a bill with very little money. Mm. I want people to reach out to me yeah. when they can't pay the rent or the car breaks down or the dog needs a veterinarian appointment and um, or something. I just, I don't want anybody to really struggle. And so I found this network of people and Amy with her Belmont Helps, Amy Kirsch, who works in my office leading she edge does. as well. I was actually just so, going to ask yeah. about that because, you know, you also, re you recruit people into I, and help people through a lot of the organizations, but you also have helped people get into real estate. Right. So why don't you talk with us a little bit about what it, what it takes to kind of get into real estate? Well, it doesn't take much. It takes a pulse, but, um, <laughs> and the ability to pass the test. But the truth is, that the people that I want to work with are people that are like me. Mm -hmm. It's why my best friend Dana ended up working with me um, 
and has helped me so much, and I'm going to get into that at a later yeah, point. Okay, but, um, but I wanted to be, a, a, I chose this company because I felt they were different. Mm -hmm. I didn't want people to be treated as transactions. We, oh, that's another thing, another organization I work with is, um, is a group that helps families that would otherwise be homeless, so we don't just earn commission checks. We look at what we get and we try to give it back. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's important and it's not, and I don't do it for marketing and I, like, I probably will want you to cut out some of the stuff that I said I do only because that's not why I want you to hire me. Although please know that when you do, a percentage of what you give me goes back into our community and to others in need. But, it absolutely um, does. Yeah. And, and I feel very grateful for that. But, and I think that it's my activism is how people got to know me. Yeah. And that that's why they call me. But you've also mentored people into the field, right? Yes. I mean, you have, I mean how many people do you think you've brought into real estate in, in the years you've been working? A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. So how do you get a listing in Belmont and the surrounding communities? Well, I mean, I don't think it's from the grocery carts. And I don't think it's the <laughs> hand sanitizer at CVS. My, I think it's because people just know me. And when somebody mentions real estate, that... Somebody knows me because almost every I do every I job do I get. Know yes. Man? Oh, and they say she's a little crazy. I'm like she's great real estate. So agent. <laughs> and a good well, member of the community. And, and so so that's a lot of it. And then when Dane and I do our open houses, there's a tendency for people when they see how we do them mm -hmm. to want to use us at their house right. when they're going to sell. Yeah. So we have people that call me that I met five or six years ago mm -hmm. and they will tell me the story yeah. of the joke that we told <laughs> at our open house <laughs> or the story and why they're going to hire us. I don't like to spend a lot of money on marketing because you can. Mm -hmm. Magazines, postcards, but I feel like that's a polluter Okay. and that you know climate change is real. We got to reduce the amount of that we consume. So I and I encourage other agents to do the same is instead of marketing through hiring people to mail stuff. Yeah that it would be much better if you put money back into your community and saw the impact that you're that having. Network, right. So that the listings come to you. Right. So I see you brought uh, someone with you, and I think when I ask the next question, we can get her introduced, because my understanding from you is that getting the listing is the easiest part. Right. What comes next? What comes next is that my sellers get to meet my best friend, Dana Dunn, <laughs> who's been working with me for years in real estate, but the way that we met was a Butler Elementary School as the PTA president. I saw her on the field because she was she was doing soccer. My kid was doing soccer with his yeah. leg braces, and um, and so Dane and I met. And we uh, were PTA presidents. We actually started an after school program at the Butler Elementary School mm -hmm. with a syllabus. And I realized at that point that Dana was very focused and could manage things. Like I was great at the sales and I could get people to sign up and that sort of thing. But she was interviewing the people that were going to be teaching the courses for the kids after school. And uh, this was our way to help take some of the children that we knew were going home mm -hmm. to empty houses and maybe empty refrigerators. And it allowed us to keep them with us until the end of the day so that we knew they were getting as much out of that elementary school as they could mm -hmm. and would have a better foundation when they got into middle school. Mm -hmm. And Dana was all in. And the wild thing was whenever I would say, hey, what do you think of this? She's like, I'm in, I'll go. <laughs> and what the, when I realized she was going to be great to help me with the real estate was her dog Cody had gotten a hold of some brownies on the counter and died suddenly. Dana was eight and a half months pregnant and showed up at my house sobbing and she's like, the color of your walls is horrible. <laughs> and next thing I knew she was, uh, cause she's like, I need a friend. I have to be around somebody right now. My husband's out of town on work. She painted the interior of my house while she, in order to get over the pain of her losing her dog. Aww. And then I realized, and not only that, she like was staging it and so when I was in the real estate, I asked her to start coming when I would go to a house that I realized needed quite a bit of work. And so... So we talk about that. I'm going to stop you for a second. Tell me a little bit about, like, when you go into a house, so you right. get a listing. Yes. What, what do you... What is your so, little checklist in your head? What are you thinking? So an unusual house. I'm going to give you an example. We walked into a house where there was an older couple and they were hoarders. And we couldn't see what the floor looked like. We had one path into rooms mm -hmm. and they were moving out of state. And um, 
it was, you know, it was four dumpsters later and a bunch of paint. But Dana, we had painters, plumbers, electricians. Yeah. There was knob and tube wiring. There was all sorts of things that would keep us oh, from being able to sell Soup it. To nuts. Because sometimes <laughs> there's <laughs> some the homes. Yeah. Full service team here. Yeah. <laughs> but there's some homes that you can't even get a conventional loan for because the banks would say, no, yeah. this doesn't feel habitable. And so we, it started smaller. But then we started going into houses and saying this would sell. We could put in a bathroom for ten thousand, yeah, and we'll get thirty more for this. Or um, you know, some we we have a hat. We have a beautiful guy that does quartz countertops, and so we might be changing that out. And Dana, you want to describe some of the things that you've done? Oh yeah, I mean it varies house to house. And sure. We always, you know, we go in with a plan. We. Most of it's just like clearing stuff out, but mm. then oftentimes once things get cleared out, we're like, oh, countertops would look better. And, you know, we sort of pick, you know, colors and get a little plan about how we want the rooms to look and any kind of contracting work, we're able to provide that for our clients, um, mm. which is great. Right. Um, it, it, puts, it, it makes it easier for them because it's really hard to sell your house. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It is a lot and of work. We're kind of there with them the whole time, helping them pack, helping them try right. not to insult them by saying, "Oh, we need to paint this wall." Not right. because we don't like what you have, but you know. And what made it easier is I would say <laughs> she'd give them to me to do that. Right. So, so Dana would manage the project, but Got I would it. pay for the work, yeah. and yeah. they would reimburse so the me at the cop. closing. Dana's the good guy. Right. But but and we but we would talk about the value. Yeah. Yes. And so there would be shock. I mean, we had so many people cry. Once when they saw their house after we'd finished with it, but more so when they saw the check yeah. for the or the offer for the for the property that yeah. we were selling for them, when they yeah. saw how much we were yeah. giving them. Because this many people were older, this was the rest of their life they had to survive on what we were selling their property for. Yeah. Well it's a really personal thing at home, right? And I it think is. so many jobs also have a therapy component, but I would say real estate oh, probably every job. has a huge component. I mean, yeah, every where you're part really of it. Hand holding and you're helping people understand the market and the process. And getting and them across that line. Yeah, and we're making friends. And oh, we're yeah. It feels yeah. like we're all one big little family. It's right. It's nice. It's a really yeah. it's right. nice. Right. Takes a village, baby. It, it does, does take a village. <laughs> well, that's one of the great things I know about you. Um, you know, sometimes I see on your Facebook page, you're standing with the family, and you're like, they just bought their first home. Yeah. We have new residents in Belmont. Right. Come welcome them. And I really, I do love that real community aspect that you guys bring to the new homeowners in town. To, right. And to community no matter what. Um, right. So well, and we want have we, you here. we want the new folks to feel blended in. Yeah. We don't want it to be a long time before they're making friends. So we tell them where to go and, you know, sometimes we'll invite the parents out and get them a babysitter. Um, but and again, Belmont Media Center, wonderful way to learn about activities that are happening around town right. where you can get to know so much more about the things that we have that are a benefit because 50% of what we're selling is the house. Yeah. The other 50% is everything you'll get that community. if you move to this community. Mm -hmm. There's That's so great. much to that. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Belmont Business Spotlight. Thank you. Major funding for the Belmont Media Center is paid by franchise fees from Comcast, Verizon, provided through the town of Belmont. Additional support is provided by our business and community sponsors, including Russian School of Mathematics and Man. Monderer Design, Tamsin Kaplan, Alden Lock and Security, Nursing on Demand, Trinkdish and Craft Beer Cellar, and by Bethel Temple Center, Belmont Chinese American Association, National Association of Armenian Studies and Research. And by you. Thank you.
support live and local TV coverage of public meetings, school events, town activities, and hyper-local news by donating to BMC at belmontmedia.org donate.